Hello, my name is Kainson, and today we are going to be looking at cocoa hashing. This is a very interesting topic because it derives its name from this bait called cocoa. One thing about this bait is that it doesn't make its own nest, but it goes to an existing nest made by another bird and then lays its egg inside there, throwing out whatever is in this nest. So it's very interesting to see because that is the principle of cuckoo hashing, moving out whatever is in the existing cell and then putting value in there. Let's see how it works. Duration will be about 10 minutes. Level is intermediate because you need to have some basic knowledge of arrays and hashing. All right, let's see. So in cuckoo hashing, two tables are maintained. Before I continue, I just want to remind you to subscribe so that you get updates when I make new lessons. So look down, you'll see subscribe button. Click on it to subscribe. So at least you encourage me to continue making these lessons. So in Coco Hashing, two tables are maintained. Take note that the, the, the objective is to reduce collision. So in this case, two tables are maintained and two different hash functions are maintained. So let's say the first table is this. Oh, sorry, I, I have to erase these. Okay, so, so we have two tables are maintained and all, as well as two different hash functions. So let's say we have, this table, and we have a second table each of them with different hash functions. So I'm going to separate these. All right, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So also we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so this is H2 and this is H1. So whatever is the output of the hash function of oh, H1 goes into table one, and whatever is the output of the hash function H2 goes into table two. Also, we are going to be looking at Koku graph. Koku graph, right? Okay. So let's say we have a name we want to hash. Let's say we have a key called Mills. So H1 of Mills gives us a value of one, all right? So let's assume this mills is M. So to store mills, we simply go to location one and store it in there. No problem. Let's say we take another item. Let's say Betty. So we calculate H1 of Betty. We calculate H1 of Betty and it gives us five. No problem, so we store it in there. Let's continue, let's take OT. We calculate H1 of OT, and it gives us six, no problem, we store it there. We can, let's take another one, let's say Jackie. We calculate H1 of Jackie, and it gives us eight. So we store it there, J. Let's take another one, let's say, we calculate H1 of, and it gives us two. We store it there, two. Sorry, you store it there, you. Now let's take this example, let's say for South, we calculate H1 of SAF and it gives us 5. 
So when we go to store item 5, we already have a B there. So what happens? We take out B. We take it out and store S because that is what we, are, we have. So this S now, we are going to calculate H2 of S and then store it in location 2. So what we are going to do is we calculate H2 of, of, of B because that is what is kicked out because H1 of B is 5. So we simply calculate H2 of B and it may give us 4. So what happens? This B moves into location 4. Now this is where it makes some sense. Cuckoo graph goes this way. When a value moves from one location to another, then you can create a graph where the vertices represent the values or the positions it moves from. So in this case, we move from 5 to what to where? To 4. And what is moving? It is moving, B is moving from 5 to 4. Okay, so this is how to create the cuckoo graph. This is just one uh, one uh, edge in the cuckoo graph. Let's take more examples so that we see how it goes. Let's say we take another one. Let's say, let's say Kani, we take H1 of Kani and it gives us three. So we check three, no problem, we store it in there. Let's take add. We calculate H1 of add. And it gives us, let's say, two. So when we try to store it here, it doesn't work. So we take out U and put what? And put E for add. Because for this U, H1 of U is 2, so we simply calculate H2 of U, and it gives us 6. So we move, to, uh, we move this U to position 6. So it means that we also could have a graph that says that from position 2, moving to position six we have what we have you moving now let's make it a little more complex let's calculate for trust so we have h1 of trust and it gives us two or let's say it gives us three right so when we try to store it here, we have K. So we take it out and put what? And put T. So we need to now calculate H2 for K. So in this case, from 3, K is going to move. Okay. So let's see where it's going to move to. If we calculate H2 of K, what we are going to have, let's say we have, six so we calculate h2 of k we have six and right there we also have six so when okay we are we, we have this item here this is u that is supposed to be here so h2 of k we have six right so if we come to six we have an item there so we have to six I uh, so think I'm getting it wrong. So, what is moving from here is uh, U. Yeah, this U is moving because we replace with E. So, so what we have is U. So, it means that we need to take out U and put... Okay, we already did this. So, we put... Uh, we have U. Okay, this is where we are. So, T. Is what we are saying so h1 of t 
Okay, so I'm going to pause this tutorial so that we continue in the next part where we are going to resolve all of these and continue creating the Cocoa Graph. Remember to subscribe if you like this video.